Although the Apollo lunar missions were completed in 1972, NASA and scientists worldwide have continued to be very interested in the moon. On NASA's public website, Apollo consistently ranks towards the top of all search inquiries. In recent years, NASA has shipped more than 500 Apollo lunar samples to researchers worldwide for ongoing investigation. So why did NASA stop going on to the moon? When will they go back to the moon again? Let's dive into today's video to know the exact scenario. Here we go! Between 1969 to 1972, during the Apollo project, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration US, landed around 12 people on the moon. However, despite various policy initiatives by American presidents, no humans have landed on the moon. Since the first moon landing 50 years ago, NASA has kept pushing the limits of knowledge to fulfill the promise of American creativity and leadership in space, and NASA will carry on with that work by going to the moon and sending astronauts there by 2024, landing on the lunar south pole. To lead an innovative and sustainable exploration program with commercial as well as international partners to enhance human expansion across the solar system, NASA is carrying out the President's Space Policy Directive 1. The Apollo program was a costly project for the US, and the cost of that varies between historical sources, where most of them agree that it cost around $20 billion US dollars in 1973, which is equivalent to $120 billion as of now. In the mid-1960s, NASA consumed around 4% of annual federal spending, compared with 0.5% recently. They also plan to send humans to the moon missions through Apollo 20 and later will adapt its moon mission technology for other exploration through AAP or Apollo Applications Program. But unfortunately, congressional cutbacks in NASA allocations accelerated the end of the moon missions to Apollo 17 in 1972 and most programs by AAP were shelved except the space station Skylab. There are various reasons why Congress reduced NASA's funding. The initial impetus to land on the moon came from the space race, which was the competition between the US and the Soviet Union to show military and technical superiority to other nations. In the 1960s, the competition cooled down, removing the strategic urgency to invest in NASA. Meanwhile, other public priorities were also coming to the fore, higher among them. After the first human landing on the moon on the 20th of July 1969 on Apollo 11, the public interest in space faded. In their 1997 book Spaceflight and the Myth of Presidential Leadership, space historians Howard E. McCurdy and Roger D. Lanius make a further case that Apollo was born out of a special circumstance. Because he was worried about Soviet military prowess, US President John F. Kennedy specifically pursued the space program and the moon landings as one of the country's main policies. As a result, NASA and its programs transitioned to an auxiliary policy with the Todd and have remained there ever since. NASA's goals shifted throughout the next decades following congressional demands, and its increasingly constrained funds for human spaceflight were allocated to initiatives other than moon exploration. The largely reusable space shuttle, whose five spacecraft completed 135 trips between 1981 and 2011, was the next significant project following Apollo. Additionally, NASA worked on several space station designs that ultimately led to its participation in the International Space Station, or ISS, whose initial components were launched in 1998. The International Space Station, or ISS, was advertised in part as a science laboratory and part as a platform for global politics, particularly about Russia, which at the time was a newly independent country emerging from the demise of the Soviet Union. Over the years, additional moon endeavors have been presented by three presidents. But the majority of these plans were shelved owing to financing issues and decreasing congressional support. Will NASA ever return to the moon? The Gateway Lunar Space Station and Project Artemis, which aims for human crewed landings by the year 2024, are two significant moon endeavors currently being planned by the Donald Trump administration. According to Jim Brendenstein, the administrator of NASA, the fresh moon landings planned for Project Artemis could cost the agency between $20 billion and $30 billion in 2019 dollars. That would be significantly less expensive than Apollo's estimated $115 billion price tag. No country in the 1960s, outside the United States and the Soviet Union, had space programs developed enough to contemplate sending people to the moon. However, in recent years, nations such as China, India, Japan, Russia, and those that are part of the European Space Agency have all made public assumptions about potential moon landings. For the Artemis and Gateway partnerships, NASA is looking for ISS partners. 
low Earth orbit is about to become commercially viable, according to NASA. Through these collaborations and experiences, NASA can return to the Moon in 2024, this time for an extended period, leading an international group of countries and businesses. American businesses can supply the International Space Station thanks to NASA's ambitious commercial resupply program. With the help of NASA's commercial crew program, travel to the space station and low Earth orbit will again be safe, dependable, and affordable from American land. This endeavor will inspire the following generation, introduce fresh information, and present new opportunities. NASA is setting the groundwork for future human exploration of Mars by traveling to the Moon. Building a sustainable, reusable architecture is one of the technologies that will be tested on the Moon to get humans to Mars and beyond. Any nation or organization that decides to send astronauts to the Moon will have to assume some risk and make financial commitments. Moreover, since humans need water, air, food, and other comforts to stay alive, human moon missions take more resources than robotic moon landings. Nevertheless, several countries are working on robotic moon ventures that could help upcoming human missions, including private enterprises from those countries. The Apollo lunar missions ended in 1972, but NASA and the rest of the world are still very interested in the moon. We will advance human spaceflight by returning to the moon on top of the thousands of individuals who worked on Apollo and before them. NASA's ongoing work on the moon is preparing us for the next major leap, which will be difficult expeditions to Mars and other locations in deep space. Nevertheless, NASA is going to the moon and from there on to Mars, wishing the world to know about it as we approach the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11 in July 2019. What are the reasons NASA should go back to the moon? The first reason to go back is that there is a lot of science to explore on the moon. Scientists learned a lot about the moon and Earth's geologic history from the rock samples that the Apollo astronauts brought back decades ago. But according to the lunar geologist David Kring, what today's astronauts can learn could reveal even more. All six Apollo landings took place close to the moon's equator because it's simpler to land a spacecraft there. However, NASA now has more aspirational goals. Recently, NASA revealed 13 potential landing locations near the South Pole, where water ice has been shown to exist deep inside craters that never receive direct sunlight. In addition, 2024 is the expected year for Artemis II, a crewed lunar flyby. In Artemis III, the first crewed landing might occur as early as 2025. It will inspire a generation of engineers and scientists. The Apollo moonshot is frequently credited when inspiring thousands of new engineers and scientists. Despite the impossibility of quantifying figures, a 2009 poll of 800 researchers found that a significant portion of today's scientists who have published in Nature in the last three years can be attributed to the moon landings for their inspiration. According to Hardgrove of ASU, we're going to have almost live video from the moon's surface with Artemis, and people will think about the moon as a genuine place. He adds that he thinks it can be inspiring. Perhaps not just for people like me, but also for people who are not considering engineering or space exploration as their career. Also, it works as a stepping stone to Mars. According to Hartgrove, Mars is around 200 times farther from the Earth than the Moon, making it extremely difficult to protect personnel from radiation exposure. There are two-year launch windows to reach Mars, he claims. Therefore, we would consider leaving our astronauts on Mars' surface for an extended period. He believes that by testing out all these technologies in the Moon first, we would be doing them and everyone else a favor. Apollo's primary goal was to reach the moon before other nations like the Soviet Union. Clive Neal, a civil and environmental engineering professor in Earth Sciences, believes that Artemis could alter that. Moreover, that possibility may not be as far off as formally assumed, given that SpaceX, a for-profit company, has been chosen to deliver the spacecraft that would put Artemis people on the lunar surface. What do you think of NASA returning to the moon? Do you believe it'll lead to more scientific exploration in our solar system? Let us know in the comments below.